Hello everybody, Tritum here, and today I want to do a review of Adventure Quest 3D. I have made it to max level a couple of times, and I have almost all the classes maxed out. And I think I am in a good position to kind of give a impression slash review of the game, as I've beaten pretty much the whole thing so far. This MMO takes a weird approach, as it claims to be a coffee break style MMO, which is kind of an oxymoron in itself. People don't play MMOs for short periods of time. They usually, you know, put in some serious grind sessions. Uh, if you do want to play just a smaller MMO that doesn't require a whole lot of your time, this is definitely one of the better ones, especially it being on mobile and PC. But for the more dedicated fan base, they tend to run out of content. That's probably its main issue it has. Uh, anyways, let's let's get into the game. Alright, so off the bat, you can see my character. He looks pretty cool. It, at least in my opinion, he does. Uh, with the graphical fidelity, it looks great um, for what it is. Yeah, I love the style. I love the armor pieces. Some people look really, really stinking cool. A lot of, a lot of effects. And that's pretty much the only thing you can buy is just cosmetics and there is one class that is gated behind a paywall it's not a crazy amazing class but it's not a bad class either I, if you play the game and you want to support them buying the guardian pack that's what it's called is probably the best way of going around doing it if you check the upgrades there are two different upgrades they both give you the guardian some dragon crystals this one's like 40 bucks and i think this is 20. i ended up buying the dragon guardian uh just because i I've sunk so much time into this game. I think at first I ended up buying this and I was eligible for an upgrade for a discounted price. So that's why I went ahead and got the uh, the collection. I didn't do it all at once. So one thing that really makes this game stand out is it kind of follows the tradition of Final Fantasy XIV as you can play every class on one character. So as you can see here, I've got Warrior 10, Mage 10, Rogue 10, Healer 10, Guardian 10, Ranger 10. Dragon Slayer 8, Pirate 10, Pudden 12, Necro 10, Ninja 2, Magomancer 11, and Berserker 10. Now, you can get all the way up to level 100 on these classes. So I am not that high a level on all the classes. But to get all the abilities and to get all the stat upgrades from leveling up, 10 is all you need. You even get the cross skill, which I'll go over that here in a minute. You get that at level 10 as well. Everything after level 10 is a few cosmetics and a title. There's really not a whole lot of drive to go past 10. And I, I think it was a missed opportunity because with the cross skill, you can switch between any of the classes cross skill, no matter what class you are. So the warrior at level 10, you get seismic slam, which is like an AOE attack. And I can put that on, I'm right on the Moglomancer, that's the class that I have. Moglomancer's is the blitzy blizzard blitz it's just an aoe freeze does some damage too uh, and it's pretty good wild shower uh gives i think haste Let me check. yeah it gives haste so they had that a little bit of customization but i, I figured that going from a maximum of rank 10 to rank 100 they throw in some more skills maybe you can switch out some of the other abilities but i think it was just a missed opportunity they could have they could have went like that but let's go ahead and head to some combat just to kind of show you how that goes. So Mongolmancer is probably not the best for showing off combat. It's more of a support class. But let's go ahead and go with a Ranger. Now they do have really, really, really good armors. So if we go check here. And I have the Dreaded Legion Bow as a cosmetic. But we can unequip the cosmetic. Okay, it says your current class requires a cosmetic bow. Alrighty, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So here's a another cosmetic bow that I have. So it looks, looks pretty cool. I got another one inside my bank, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna play with this. So yeah, you see, this is the pretty much the combat. Um, it's very, 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 very mobile, and I absolutely love it. Uh, even with something like the mage, we switch to mage. And then we'll switch the cross skill to the paladins just for a heal. 
And as you can see, you're very, very mobile. There is no casting. You can still move around. There's things to dodge. So overall, the combat is probably one of the best when it comes to the non-auto mobile MMOs. Uh, and, it, and it's okay for PC. It's not bad. I've seen better. I've seen worse. Uh, but overall, I think they did a solid job. Boom. Got him. Let's go back to quests. Or as you can see, I have quite a bit of quests going on here. I open up my daily chest. They also offer these daily chests you get for every day. Tomorrow, I'm going to get my mega chest. Gives you some dragon crystals. Gives you a mount. And I got a new helmet, which actually looks kind of freaking cool. I, I like that. I kind of like that. Uh, let's go to classes. And we can switch to the Guardian, because this is the one that is locked behind a paywall. And pretty much he excels at just being a tank. So his two ability gives him some Guardian marks. His three ability helps taunt. His four ability heals him or allies. And then he's got an ultimate ability. Um, but So this is, you know, it's nothing broken. It's a good class. I'm not going to say it's, you know, it's not. But, uh... You know, it is the one that is locked behind the paywall. Everything else is just cosmetics or stash tabs. As far as the map goes, um, this isn't really interactable. So, uh, these are all the regions, and, you know, you can open them up, and there's some sub regions inside. So, there are quite a bit of maps that you can go through and, and play. I want to go to the main town square, though. You can see a bunch of people running around. We got some fishing spots here. And the way this game does mounts is you end up just churning into the animal itself. You don't ride it. So here's my Legion horse I got from uh, killing one of the bosses. So there is a lot of cosmetics. That's what this game's main focus is. Like, that dude looks cool. Sorry, I can't go first person. That dude looks dope. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much the huge, huge premise about this game is just looking cool and grinding for cosmetics. There isn't a whole lot to do with as far as power goes. I don't have the best gear in the game, but I can easily, you know, fight all the current bosses. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there is top tier gear, but I never feel pressured to go for it. So I never really grind for it. I just grind for cosmetic stuff. They do have a main plot, and it involves this thing. I'm not going to get into the main plot, but it's far from finished. They do do an excellent job with the event systems that they got. So right now they got this. They got the new story. Um, so now you, they've actually finished this saga, which is kind of cool. So I got to go play that. And they got the new Dage collection that you can grind for. And then I don't know what that's all about. Uh, so you can go over here and there's a kind of an attack defense PvP thing that you can do, which is pretty cool. So they have a story. They got zones to go through. But once you go through it, after that, all there really is to do is either wait for a new story to come out, events, or just grind for cosmetics. So um, there is a lot of, a lot of times where it's kind of it feels like a, a drought of content. Um, because it is designed to be, like I said, the coffee break style MMO. So that is probably one of its biggest cons. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you know, you got your daily tasks you can do. There's a guild system, but they don't really have a lot going on with it yet. Hopefully they'll change that soon. Uh, crafting usually just ends up being you killing a bunch of stuff. And then going up to the merchant and have them craft it with your stuff. You don't really do much of the crafting itself. As far as cosmetics go, the cosmetics you gotta buy from individual vendors. So you can see I have that dude's bow. You can go here and do the uh, quest for the Legion. You can go to the Legion Assault and you can get cool cosmetics like this. If you're into that type of stuff. That's pretty cool. Here's the Legion guy, or the, uh, he's the Paladin. It's the Paladin versus Legion thing that they've had going on um, that you can grind for and get their cosmetics. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up. You go in uh, different areas, do quests. The he There's a lot of humor in the quest. This is a very tongue-in-cheek humor type of game. Don't expect very much seriousness in it. Um, and it's just a lot of tiny little stories thrown into this massive game 
and overall I think you would have a pretty good time with it, especially on mobile. This is definitely one of the best mobile games. Uh, the combat at the beginning is kind of rough. It's kind of, I'd say it's similar to Villagers and Heroes in a degree that it's just you and the other dude whacking each other. But as you progress and you go through the areas, the AI gets a little bit more intelligent and there's things to dodge. And then they got a little bit more mechanics that you have to deal with. It's Especially some of the most recent areas are by far the best. I do hope they go back and do some tweaking on some of the older areas, but uh, not going to hold my breath on that. All right, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content similar to this one, hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.